I think we're going to have more than enough to talk about with James and Marilyn. <laughs> so you got involved in the Ban the Box effort here in the city of New York and to try to change. And what, can you talk a little about what happened there? Well, I got involved. I started organizing people that I knew that had been formerly incarcerated. And I started putting my story out. And then I started meeting with city council and sharing my story with everyone. And then my life took off. Like I wound up being on television, I wound up being in the newspapers, something I never thought a person that came from my community could ever do. Where, where is your community? South Bronx. And now, so you went from coming out of prison and being unable to get a job because of that box right. to being a leader in the movement to get that box removed on job applications here in the city of New York, right? Yes, sir. And what, and what did y'all win? Yes, we did. As of October 27th, it became law officially. And I was with the mayor when he signed it, and I have the pen. <laughs> really, what does your what do your what does your family think of of your work? You've in becoming a community leader like this and being so visible. Uh, how what does your family uh, how do they see that? Well. You know, when I came home in 97, it was hard getting my kids back in my life. I had two older daughters and I had two baby boys that were being raised by family members. And um, my oldest daughters are 33 and 35. So in the last, in between 1997 and 2010, I was still rebuilding my relationship with them because of me being in prison um, being a drug user at that time. I recently celebrated 21 years drug free. Mm. And, <laughs> and through being, staying out of prison, being drug free, my children have seen a whole different side of me. Because, you know, society s sees me as a felon, but my children used to see me like that until they started really seeing how my life changed from me coming home. In my struggle, I didn't go backwards. I kept fighting and fighting each day to make sure we have food, to make whatever means necessary that I had to do legally, say that again, <laughs> legally, to make sure that we were, you know, we have food, housing, and clothing. And then everything else was, you know, a gift. But um, if it wasn't for the support of my family and my community, because I, I met great people along the way who have supported me and been by my side, and I, I, don't, I can't, I've been blessed. But um, now I have a godson. Well, somebody actually let me, you know, be a godmother. So, you know, that's, that was, I have three godchildren now. But my godson recently um, started, wants to be a community organizer, and he's a teenager. So he asked me on April 1st to speak where he works because um, he's proud of me, and he wants to be like me. Yeah, that touched my heart. Yeah. I have my 15-year-old. Um, she wants to be like me, too. Yeah, so, you know. <laughs> I never thought nobody wanted to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had the pleasure of working with Marilyn for a number of years at, through her work at Vocal New York. And for those of you who um, have your phones out or want to take this down, you can go to vocalnewyork.org and learn more about uh, Marilyn's work and the work of her crew there. Um, I think on more than one occasion, I've wanted to be like Marilyn when she's out on the street and leading oh, yeah, uh, campaigns for reform. Uh, my co-director, Lorenzo Jones, who's based out of Hartford, um, he talks about r when people come home from prison, and he says, um, when people are coming home, men get out and start looking for a job, and women get out and start looking for their children. And I think, Marilyn, the, wow. your story emphasized that for me, and I think the work that you've done to uh, move from where you did coming out on January tw uh, 21st, 1997 uh, to today being a community leader is tremendous. So thank you. Um, James, 
James Ellaby, James and I uh, just met this evening uh, when, we, when I got here, and the first thing I noticed when I walked in were these beautiful tables that are in the back corner um, that you may see, and if you haven't, you should check out before you leave. Uh, James is a, uh, part of the group ReFoundry, which is a co-sponsor of this event this evening, um, and James and I got to talk in the back, and uh, in time moved by pretty quickly. We spent, we spent a good 10, 15 minutes, and we thought we were just going to take a few James, you were telling me this story of your work um, as a designer. You were designing furniture. You're, you've launched your own business here uh, after being incubated at ReFoundry, um, which is remarkable in and of itself. But you were telling me a story about some recent good news that you had in February. Can you talk a little bit about that? <coughs> is this? Oh, it is on. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, let me see. Basically, um, I'm a little nervous. I. But um, recently I, I had designed, you know, first of all, I, I, I have to say that, um, you know, I owe a lot of this, you know, to Refoundry for giving me this opportunity to um, make something out of my life. You know, um, I've, I've been in, uh, in and out of prison a few times and, um, you know, I've never had the opportunity that I had this time, you know, when I um, signed up for Refoundry, um, really to make a difference in my life and really to um, live a life, you know, to my fullest po potential. You understand? Um, man, I love my life today. And what I want to say is this, what, what, what he's speaking on is um, recently I had designed an island for a customer of mine. And, um, you know, absolutely, it's a kitchen island. I design furniture. I love designing furniture. I love, um, you know, making, you know, designing pieces out of wood. At any rate, um, you know, when I was delivering it to the lady, she was like, wow, James, this is so beautiful. And this is going to look beautiful in an in in apartment that I'm renting. So I had a, you know, a rapport with the lady, and um, she was a customer of mine, and I was like, um, and basically she knows my story. And I was saying to her, I was like, wow, Andrea, I'm, I'm in need of an apartment. I said, I haven't, I've been looking for an apartment, you know. I came home in October um, 2014, and I've been October 10th. <laughs> And I've been looking for an apartment for the longest, and um, I've I've never been able to find one. At any rate, she was like, um, "You can have this apartment, you know. Um, I'll rent it to you with no problem. Um, it's in Edgewater, New Jersey. You just got to come and see it. If you like it, you can have it. And um, you know, it's those type of connections that I gained, you know, through." you know, my, my, you know, my occupation, do my relationship with, with um, my customer base, um, whereas that um, I went out to see an apartment and, um, you know, I rent a condo now, um, <laughs> signed a, I signed a lease, I got a, I got a garage, <laughs> you know. Um, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it, was, it was a beautiful feeling. I haven't had my own place in so long. Um, they don't make it easy at all. Um, actually, I think you have to make ten times what the rent is. Being that I'm an entrepreneur now, um, you know, I had no pay stubs to show, and I make decent money. Um, I. You don't have none of that. Um. And and it's and it's. I kid you. I I don't know any other way. To, you're not getting an apartment, you know. And um, that's how it was for me for a long time. I had Tommy Safian, I had the ref the whole refoundry team trying to help me get an apartment. Everybody, you know, people, you know, even my family members um was trying to help me and um. Oh my God. The problem that I'm faced with right now is that, um, you know, I'm on parole in Manhattan, and I need parole to transfer my case to New Jersey so I can live legally in an apartment that I'm renting. 
And um, every time I go to parole for the last maybe two months, I have a new parole officer. And um, for the last two months, they told me they was going to make a home visit. They haven't visited me yet, you know? And um, I don't know, basically, you know, I'm waiting on them to make a home visit. I'm waiting, you know, I'm waiting to get a steady parole officer so I can, um, you know, even put in for interstate transfer. And, um, you know, those th these are the red tapes that I'm facing now, you know? Um, <coughs> Absolutely. Correct. The thing about um the you know the the division of parole, um basically they don't answer to anyone. You know um they they do what they do. They do what they want to do. Um, you know like I said I've been waiting. You know I report whenever I'm supposed to report, and um I'm just waiting on to be able to speak to someone so that I can have you know. So that I could live, comf you know, I can move on with my life. Um, it's it's kind of like they're holding me back at this stage, but um, you know, I at any at any rate, I I continue to do what I need to do, you know. Um, I don't know. I'm I, I'm 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 doing good, <laughs> you know, and I'm I'm happy. I um, you know, I'm doing the best I've ever done in my life. I have two aunts here that um visited, you know, used to come to see me in prison and and you know when I when I when I see them and you know they don't you know yes they express you know how um proud they are of me but I could just see it in their face you know what I mean um was that um you know I'm out here this time I have since 1983 I don't I have not been in the street for um I don't know. I don't think I've been in the street for 90 days without going back to prison since 1983. Um, I've been home now almost three years, and um, <laughs> man. Yeah, you hear me? It's a beautiful thing, you know. I'm a grandfather. My son is here, also, and I. My son um, works for me at Refoundry. Um, beautiful thing. He had designed the table, and um, you know it, man. My, you know one thing about my children. Um, you know my children never judge me. I watch my children grow up in prison year after year, and um, every time I come home, you know, you know they rooted for me. Daddy, you could do it. Daddy, you could do it. But daddy went back to prison, you know. Um, I never had the opportunities that I have today, honestly, man. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't just say this. I never had the opportunities that I have today. And um, I tell Tommy Safian a lot, yo. <laughs> you know, I owe it, it to to Refoundry. He tell me you owe it to yourself, man. And um, but Refoundry opened that door for me. And, um, you know, it, it allowed me really to put my thinking and my, my best foot forward. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. You're good. We just, we're on, we're, we hit our time. Absolutely. We got to move on. I want to say a couple of things before we wrap on this, though. The first is I want to thank both of you for coming up and being here tonight and sharing your stories. Thank you very thank much. You. Um, I want to encourage. I want to encourage folks, please do check out uh, James, the, uh, his work in the back. You can get his card in case you're looking for some furniture. That's the place to go. Check out Vocal's work. Uh, there's two methods that you've heard here tonight that, that James and Marilyn have, have talked about in their stories. One is providing people a, a, a pathway to employment, right, when they're coming out of prison. Like James and Refoundry is this story. James was able to become the entrepreneur and designer um, and is now employing his own family. And this is a critical thing for you all to keep in mind when you hear the rest of the panelists tonight talk about the significant problems that we face with mass incarceration. The other thing that you heard here was Marilyn's work with Vocal and the effort to transform policy, to change administrative practices, right, through organizing and people power. 
And if Marilyn's story doesn't inspire you that you can, if you think, well, how are we going to change this? Go read Marilyn's story about how they went and changed it. Folks who have been completely dismissed by the system and then who are then, after years of fighting, signing a bill with the mayor um, to make the employment practices or employ employment pathways more fair and equitable. So keep those two methods in mind as you're hearing the rest of the speakers this evening. Let's give another round of applause to our speakers, please.